Oh, sure. So um, I think there's a lot of advice out there on how to write queries, right? And um, it can get a little bit overwhelming, I've found, I think, when you're trying to not do anything wrong, right? Um, and so for writers who are feeling stuck and, and not quite sure how to open their query, I have a formula that I think is, you know, not the only way to do it, but but you'd be hard pressed to go wrong with this formula. Um, and, and I call it X is Y until Z, um, where X is your main character, Y is the sort of circumstances they find themselves in at the beginning of the story, and then Z is the inciting incident. So the example I always used is, you know, Harry is a sad British boy until he finds out he's a wizard. Like that can be the opening line of your query. And it tells me a lot. It tells me who the main character is. It tells me a little bit about the world of the story. It tells me the basic setup. And you have plenty of room in your query to go into more detail from there. But if you're feeling stuck, that X plus Y into X is Y until Z can really sort of guide you and help you focus down the pitch so it's as digestible as possible. And obviously that, I mean, that to me sounds bulletproof. Um, I'm, I'm not accepting queries, but if I were, I would definitely stand up and take notice of, of ones that follow that formula. But I assume especially uh, for uh, folks that are thinking of querying you personally, if they're not using that that formula, then that already tells you that maybe they're not paying as, as much attention to the type of agent that they want uh, as they should be, right? No, no. I mean, you know, there's, like I said, there's a lot of different ways to write a query. And if someone, you know, doesn't happen to use that format or, or hasn't seen the, the video on it or one of my talks on it, that's obviously totally fine. You know, um, I think it's more of a guidepost, uh, you know, a way to sort of cement your query if, if you need the help. But, you know, there are other sort of more complex ways to open a query. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, so I'm, you know, always open to different varieties of, of query style. Uh, but, you know, I will say that um, oftentimes authors, I think, can forget that agents are usually reading queries, you know, in batches of 10 or 15 at a time. I think most of, uh, you know, me and most of my colleagues tend to read our queries all at once, you know, sort of in big batches. So we're seeing one after another. Um, and sometimes authors can include long preambles in their query, like, you know, dear, you know, most honorable Mr. Cusick, like, you know, when I was walking my dog the other day, I was thinking about the best way to open this query. And those are great and they're personal, but they can kind of go on for quite a while. And I find myself sort of scanning down to see, okay, what's the pitch? What's the pitch? Because I want to make my evaluation. Um, so starting out with that setup is usually a good idea because it lets the agent get an immediate picture of, you know, is this book potentially for me? And so well, let's 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 start there. When you've got a, a, a full inbox of you know maybe sixty uh, queries or more waiting for you, and obviously you've got limited time because there's a whole bunch of stuff that agents have to do well beyond uh, reading queries. How do you quickly narrow down that list to something that that might be of interest to you? What what's your typical process for evaluating a query that you've received? Sure. I think that the um, the first and most important thing I'm looking for is is the concept of the novel something I think I can work with. So, um, for instance, if it feels too familiar to too many things that have sold recently, that might be a quick no. Um, if it also feels a little bit too generic or quiet, that might be a no. So another way to put that might be, you know, here's my story. It's about a kid growing up and he deals with things like bullying and not getting along with his parents and having to study. Well, that could be a beautifully written book, but there's just not enough going on there to get me excited about it. And I don't think there'd be enough there to get editors excited about it. So first and foremost, I'm looking for a concept that feels sort of fresh and fun and intriguing. Um, if the concept is there, then I'm gonna look at the writing and say, okay, does the writing support the concept? Is the voice there? Is it well written? Is it well put together? Um, so those are really like A and B when I'm reading a query. Query letter comes first, then, then comes the writing. Um, beyond that, I sort of look for signals in the way the query letter is written. Um, not all authors have to be ingenious query letter writers, though I do think that it's an important part of a business relationship to be able to sort of, in a concise way, talk about your work and about yourself. Um, so, you know, I would certainly take on a project that I liked, even if the query letter was far from perfect. So I don't want authors to feel too much pressure in that way. You know, a good book will speak for itself. Um, but if the query letter is, say, riddled with typos, or if you're pitching a young adult manuscript, but you call it a middle grade because you don't really understand the market, those can be some bad signs for me. Um, and they can be the sorts of things that would make me more likely to move on to the next query in line. 
Gotcha. So just, I mean, as it is with anything in life, authors should present themselves uh, professionally and let let you know that, hey, they, they had the skills to back up their claim that this is a book that's worth your time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that sometimes there can be a misconception that your query letter itself ne really needs to stand out or be different um, in the way it's written. So sometimes I'll see authors send in query letters that are written from the point of view of their main character or really sort of super goofy or bizarre. And I, I get the thinking there because you want to stand out. But what I always say is that your work and your concept are going to what make you are going to be what makes you really stand out. Um, and you know, especially uh, when we're talking about like writing a query letter from the point of view of your main character, I always prefer when authors don't do that because I'm going to have a business relationship in theory with that writer, not with like Rodney the Rhino, whoever the main character is, right? So I want to talk to you as the writer rather than your main character. Um, so when I say like present yourself in a professional way, that's all I mean. It doesn't have to be super uh, clinical or super formal, but just remember that you know your agent is going to be a business partner, and um, you know I'm going to know your social security number at some point. Like it can be a, a more sort of professional communication, um, and really let your concept do the talking for you. You don't need your query letter itself to be sort of weird or outre because usually agents have seen, you know, we've heard every joke and we've seen every sort of gimmick, you know. I've seen the line, we're gonna blow Harry Potter out of the water at least 70 times in my career. So it's like, you know, you wanna keep Thank it- you. I'm the only one that has blown Harry Potter out of the water. The rest I know, are you were the only it. one, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so so I think it's it's keep keep it clean and concise. Um, and if you get lost, you know, using that X is Y until Z can sort of help help put you on the right course for the rest of the query. And when we're uh, talking about concept, are we talking about just in general what appeals to you personally, or is it a combination of that plus I know this editor or that editor has mentioned that they're interested in that type of story. I know where the market is for this. What what is it about a concept that speaks to you? Yeah, so. Um, it depends on a lot of things, but it really is a blend of does it speak to me personally and does it work in the market? And you need both of those things, I think, to represent a project well. Um, you know, I think as an agent, I really need to be personally invested in the story to be a good salesman and advocate for it and also to help edit it. Um, so, for instance, you know, I don't do a lot of straight contemporary romance. Um, I have in the past. You know, it's not something I typically take on a lot. And one of the reasons is I don't read a lot of contemporary romance. And so um, sometimes I'm not sure, you know, what the difference is between like a really good version of this contemporary romance and an even greater one, because that's not my area of expertise typically, right? Um, so it's gotta be something that I'm, I'm really passionate about. Then separate from that, it needs to be something that I feel editors are going to get really excited about based on what I know about the market. So on the one hand, it might be, oh, you know, I'm so passionate about this story. So for instance, with Maybe a Mermaid by Josephine Cameron that's coming out from FSG. I read that book. It had a good, strong concept. But more than anything else, I was just in love with the writing. It really moved me. And, and I thought to myself, you know what? Even if no one buys this, I am representing it. I'm sending it out because I believe in this book. It's just, it's just so beautiful. Um, and the response from editors, I mean, that book went to auction. A lot of editors really connected with it on that personal level. So I think that's, you know, that's why that personal degree of, of enthusiasm absolutely needs to be there um, when you're signing with an agent. You know, you, you really need to know that they get what you're trying to do and, and really appreciate it, that they would be a fan if they weren't your agent already, you know?